This is Pastor Clark, chaplain at Three Links, with you today with the homily from the Gospel of Matthew. It's good to be with you. Thank you for joining me this day. I want to read to you a portion from the chapter 13 of Matthew. It's a parable, little story, big meaning. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the workers asked, didn't you plant good seed? Where did these weeds come from? Should we go and gather them up? And the farmer said, no, in gathering them, you would uproot the wheat from the, the wheat and the weeds, let them grow together until harvest. And I'll tell the harvesters to collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And he ends with, let anyone with ears listen. This story that Jesus tells is one of the more challenging parables in Matthew's gospel. We try to figure out, we try to name the cause and effect, where's God in the story. We almost try to make the parable more than it's meant to be. I don't believe that it's an explanation of evil, nor an invitation to divide the world into wheat and to weeds, nor an instruction to do nothing until God comes in judgment. It's a story like most likely trying to help Matthew's community understand why people are falling away from Jesus at that point. It offers an opportunity to talk about evil, not necessarily to answer it successfully. Why does evil exist? but to acknowledge that evil does exist, that this world is not what it could be, and there are lots of hurts and frustrations. We like to do something about it, but we don't seem to be able to figure it out. The experience of those servants, the weeds growing up in the wheat, frustrated that things have gone awry, isn't foreign to us in our time and our age either. How many times have we felt like an enemy has done this? When cancer returns, when a job goes away, when a relationship ends, when depression sets in, when an addiction robs a loved one or ourselves of life, when a loved, loved one's life is cut short, when the world turns its back on people, or when a pandemic like COVID-19 strikes. At these times, there is a sense that the world is not what God intended it to be, and it can be almost unbearable. And we don't have to believe in a red-suited devil with a pointy tail and a pitchfork to name that sin is real, brokenness, and evil are real in our world. We know that. But the temptation is to try to explain evil, and it probably won't turn out well. But at least we can acknowledge evil is real. I've witnessed that time and again, how easily we're tempted to try to explain evil and assigning it so often that God's involved in, in bringing that evil to us. We say things like, don't worry, it's part of God's plan. Some will say, or don't worry, God never gives us more than we can handle. Or God's purpose for this will reveal itself in time. I thought those words are supposed to bring comfort and assign God's responsibility or that God is to blame for tragedy and brokenness. Not all that different from the insurance policy that says it protects us from fire, hail, tornado, hurricane, and other acts of God. As though God is pulling the strings with disaster. What I believe this parable suggests is that God does not will evil for us, not in any way, shape, or form. That our tragedies are not part of God's plan. That God never, ever wants us to suffer. Rather, when we read what Paul says in one of his epistles, God worked for good in all things for those God loves. The chief example for me is the cross of Jesus Christ itself. I think the cross offers supreme testimony that evil happens and yet is not strong enough to defeat God's love and care for us. That God is committed to staying with us through the most difficult circumstances we can experience and that God can and will work but does not wish 
or will, even the worst of situations. About the weeds growing in the midst of the wheat, an enemy has done this, Jesus says. Not God, but the enemy. That's the first thing to remember. And second, in the end, it will be up to God to sort out the weeds and the wheat, the good and the evil. There is always evil around. And that evil runs through us and our communities and the world, but ultimately, it will be up to God to sort it out. Trusting that God will redeem the world, free us to take responsibility for caring for our corner of the world. You don't have to defeat evil and death. That's God's job. But you and I can care for our neighbors, speak out against injustice, support those in need right now, right where you find yourself, strengthen what is good around you. This parable, like so many of the others told by Jesus, is a part about waiting. And waiting is what we find very difficult. The farmer waits for the harvest time, watching frustration, the changes in the weather, the prices of his or her crops, wondering what the yield will finally be. Birds wait for the tiny seed to grow. The woman baking bread waits for the leaven to spread through the dough until the whole loaf is leavened. We try patiently to await the end of the pandemic so that we can be fully united with our loved ones once again. And that's what God's kingdom is like as well. At the heart of the parable is the note of being patient and awaiting for God. Wear our masks, wash our hands, keep our distance. So we wait with patience and we pray for patience, not like people in a dark room wondering if someone will bring in a candle, but like people who early in the morning know that the sun will rise and are now waiting the full brightness of the midday. For God is stronger than evil. We are loved. God is here. A new day is coming. I believe that. And I hope you do too. This is Chaplain Clark.